everybody. How you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Yes. Ooh, sunny there. Okay, I'm gonna set you up right here actually. Oh, yes. Well, today is the unboxing for the Guana Wanaka 3 Guana Equipment Wanaka 3 Rooftop Tent Annex. I think I got that all together. <laughs> Yes, I got it in the mail. Oh, I, I actually got it in the mail probably a month ago, but I've been so busy with getting the shop going with knives again after all the trips I've been doing, getting all the video content, everything edited. Kids start school again, so it's back to the normal, you know. And uh, of course, there's projects to do that you're trying to wrap up before winter time. And so we were just getting so inundated with stuff like that that uh, the box has been sitting in the garage for over a month now. So, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to pop this open. Oh yeah, look at that guys, look at that. Uh, so, oh, we got our stakes and our guidelines in our bag right here. And more importantly, there we go. Wow, that's a nice, it's kind of a nice carry sack. So let's bring in closer. So we have this here, so let's see here. This is your floor. This is a nice heavy duty rubber coated floor. Uh, this will actually Velcro in to the bottom. Um, it doesn't zip, the annex itself zips across the top, but it does not zip along this, the bottom. It does Velcro. Um, so, oh, well actually, hold on here, did they change it? I might have misspoke here because there's zippers at here, the bottom here. There's zippers all the way around. Whoa, hey, that's a bonus. So, well, we're gonna have to lay that out in a second because what I'm gonna do is actually fold the ladder back up again and do all this, but the bottom's gonna go in. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Let's go lay the bottom down. Oh man, okay, well, I gotta tell you first and foremost, this is a very pleasant surprise because originally the Wanakas, it was Velcroed and now it's zippered. And they didn't tell me about that, that is great. So yeah, let's go get the rest of it going, let's get this set up. Now full disclosure here, if the sun focuses on me, full disclosure, I have not done this as you've seen. I'm just opening it up for the first time, unboxing it, putting it together. I'm under the perception or under the impression that this may be a two person job. It's just me guys. So uh, I'm gonna give it a shot and see how it goes. Okay, so first thing, first problem was is no directions. <laughs> yeah, there's, well actually, no, I got my stakes and my guidelines, but no paperwork and how to. So that was kind of an issue there. Okay, so that was number one, because number that led to number two is, I didn't know that I had to fold the tent back up because there's that track. Let's see if I can get you inside. Example, if you guys can see it, the tent is stitched in here, and there's a channel right here, and the same channel is underneath here. Well, the the stitching actually has a rubber, uh, rubber solid rubber tube uh, that is stitched inside here, so it allows it to slide inside here and not come up. And that's what all rooftop tents have, you know, like this. Uh, no matter what brand you're getting, for the most part, they all have the same kind of style and design. Um, so the kicker was, is it actually, the, the, the Wanaka 3 uh, tent, actually this side, because I didn't know what side was what at first until I saw that rubber strip. And then I saw, oh, it's gonna go into that channel, but I couldn't get in a channel without the tent folded back closed. So I closed it, ran it through the channel, 
fairly easy, but again, uh, as you saw with that and a zipper ring, definitely this, it's doable for one person. Um, I think that took me about six minutes, five, six minutes to do, uh, but it would be easier if there was two people. Now with that said, I most likely probably will never use that if I'm by myself. So if it's my son and I, or my wife and I, or one of my buddies that we're gonna go out and use this, whether it's to go on a hunt or camping or an overlanding a journey, um, I'm gonna use it then at that point. Uh, so I got that done. Uh, the YKK zipper, it zipped up good, it's solid. Uh, you can see it's double stitched in here. You see it, there's double stitching, and I'm sorry, the lighting's not the best in here right now, uh, but it worked out good. Oh, and I had this uh, uh, fabric they give you with this. This stays on the tent the entire time and the ladder closes on it, but this is so you can stuff your raincoats and everything in. Uh, just, just in case you're wondering, I don't think I ever talked about that. Uh, so I got that set up, whew, man. Yeah, it was a little, it's a little daunting, a little challenging at first, but I think if I get the lay of it, you know, get the hang of it for after a couple of times, it'd be good. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna find the zipper and see exactly how the base, I see it right there. I gotta make sure the base is lined up properly uh, cause there's a, see the, the zipper's there. So that means it's gonna start right there and the floor's really thick. I'm really impressed with that. That's really nice. The one thing I think I would do is I don't like the idea of this tent or the ladder sitting in this. Uh, I'll fold that back up and I'll show you cause that's kind of a, a, an issue. That's something I'm gonna bring up to Gowana. Uh, that's gonna that's gonna tear up your floor. bit of a learning curve here gang um, so initial pros and cons is it's definitely something that if you had two people it would work out a lot better again I think I already said this if it was just me I wouldn't be putting this up uh, unless I was out for I would have to say it's worth going through all this if you're gonna be out three four or five days something like that if you're going hunting long long-term camping, you know, kind of stuff like this, and you don't plan on taking a truck anywhere, then it's worth it. If you have multiple people, I would say yes, then it's worth it because you got help to take it up, set it up and take it down. Uh, so some of the uh, pros and cons already I can share with you is the Wanaka floor is awesome. It's really thick, really heavy duty. I like that. Um, so that was good. but. Uh, and, and it's a pro and con to this part is they give you this flap. They give you this flap right here. And what this flap is meant to do, it's to cover the zipper so you don't get any weather intrusion or anything. These are YKK, so it's really nice. But the problem is, is as I was zipping this, um, I had to step out because I was able to catch the, the snags. But this part of the fabric right here would start to get caught in the zipper, kind of like that. And uh, um, it would get caught in a zipper. So when I was inside the tent trying to zip it, even though it was a little easier to do it that way, I ended up getting snagged um, quite a bit. So I had to step out a couple of times and start zipping it. So that's one big problem there. It's almost as if the problem was created because they're trying to do such good quality care to cover that zipper, give you that flap. Uh, another thing is uh, you'll notice uh, with the lift on my truck, now I'm short, so the 
annex doesn't get down to the ground because of the lift. So this is this is something that everybody's gonna have to deal with because some trucks are higher than others. And if you do lifts and modifications, it's not specific to Guana equipment or the Wanaka again. It's not a dink on them per se, it's just a dink on the annex system itself because a lot of us deck out our trucks a little bit more. So there's that there. Um, I also, as you see, I staked down the corners and right here, but I didn't do the back corners. And that's because um, it's inside there and the stake parts, they're really short to the ground. The stakes are long, but there's no way I'm gonna get a stake here. So I would have to do a stake and then a small little rope or something like that to keep this here. And uh, it's not gonna really do me a lot of good. Um, maybe if I was someplace, it might be super windy, uh, but that might be a whole nother issue anyways. But. So far, so good. I, what I did is I ran the guidelines, not having directions. I didn't look at anything, but I ran the guidelines through these little loops because it just seemed like it made sense to run the line through there. So it connects to this, it comes down, it draws tension to the part of the rooftop tent here and it pulls it down this way. So you can see now it's nice and tight. And then it comes through here to keep the wall standing out. And then I just ran it that way. Excuse the chicken in the background. I don't know what the heck's going on in there, but they're having issues. Uh, so, and then I staked down the middle one here. I did this side, I did the middle one here. And again, I skipped the back part. Um, and like I'd mentioned earlier, I had to go around and take all the poles back out because uh, you can't put the annex on uh, with the rooftop tent completely set up. You have to do that separately. Uh, so I didn't, again, I didn't know that. Again, ran the guidelines in, seems to keep everything nice and tight. Now what's really cool about the annexes as there's a, there's a flap on the inside, we'll, sh we'll see, hopefully the lighting will be okay. As there's a flap on the inside that can, uh, act, you can use to access your vehicle if that was the type of vehicle you had. But on the outside here, they give you three awnings that come across here. Now the poles are in a house, I didn't bring the poles out, but I have the, uh, the, the Morpho, the awning, uh, 270 degree awning pole, so I'll grab those. And we'll set up one of these just to kind of show you what it looks like, or maybe set up a couple of them and show you what it looks like with that going. Okay, so um, this opening here is about five foot six, five foot eight, uh, not that bad. As you can see, I got it open now. Uh, it's staked out really good. You know, you could do just one one line off of each. You could probably do two if you wanted. I just don't like a lot of guidelines, you know, tripping hazards, but here we go here. So you're gonna enter the annex, and as you can see, you can see how high the floor pan is over there by my truck. Now, that's two things. One, it's the lift. Two, it's the fact that uh, the ground here slopes. I was able to stake it closer over here than I was over there, but there's some wrinkle here and everything, and maybe if you had two people, uh, you might be able to kind of push the wrinkles out and then stake this down better. Again, this was my first time, I was being a little haphazard with it probably, uh, but this also shows you this is the uh, awning, or yeah, I guess entrance and an awning off of this side that goes towards the truck. And then this one here opens up and goes that way. What's really neat about this one is that the Morpho awning will come around the back part of the truck here and come around and it actually gets tight to this. And it will come out to about here, I think it is. It'll, the awning will come out to about here. And then you got a pole and stuff like that. And then I, 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 I attach it underneath the rack there. But you could, there's probably a good possibility you could actually open this up and roll it all up because they give you tie lines for both uh, this and they also give you tie lines that you can tie on. You see the T through the shadow there to to uh, roll up the door. And uh, you could actually enter and exit through that way and maybe be sheltered from the environment. Um, this big U-shape here, that is to access your vehicle. So if this was on a vehicle uh, that didn't have a bed, like a pickup truck, if this was somehow attached over your cab of your truck and I wanted to access the passenger door, then this could zip be zipped open and you can access your door that way. If you had a back door or something like that, you can do that sort of thing.
Now, what I was getting at earlier, I might have mentioned about the ladder, is the Morpho's got a really nice, or this uh, the Wanaka's got a really good, thick, rubber-coated, it looks like this uh, ripstop uh, material that the tents are made out of, uh, but uh, or at least the Wanaka is, but it's waterproof and everything. It's really nice. I like the idea of the zippers, but the kicker is, is the ladder. As you'll see here, it's plastic here, but it's metal right here. And when you get in the ladder, you want it kind of on an angle. You're not going to get it in it up and down straight like that. So by having that metal right there, I could definitely see within a short period of time, probably just one season, you're going to wear right through this, this liner and you're going to be miserable and you're going to not like Wanaka and you're not going to like yourself. Uh, so I'm thinking I'm going to have to have some way of covering these that it's a little bit more protected like a rubber foot or something or maybe you're going to have some extra pad or something maybe a strip of carpeting that you can lay down on here just a small one that you can actually set this ladder on top of and it would be in place so you're not digging through the floor basin because that would not be cool uh sorry if it's a long video um i do apologize for that i want to try to get as much detail and information in here for you as I possibly could. Uh, so takeaways of this, if you're brand new to rooftop tents and you're not sure what kind of rooftop tent to get yet, what are the pros and cons to doing something like this, like the Guana Equipment Wanaka 3? The pro is that whether or not you use an annex, you're gonna have an overhang as your ladder is here. You're gonna have an overhang. So if it's inclement weather and it's just you or you and somebody else, okay, two of you are gonna be sheltered enough to be able to get in and out of your tent. I like the idea of sitting at the opening of the tent to be able to put my shoes on, uh, get my jacket on, do whatever I have to do, and not have the weather coming in at me. A lot of your, about pretty much every hard shell tent and a lot of your soft tents, soft shell tents, all will open up and the opening is exposed to the elements. Now you could say I'm gonna face this way or that way, but ultimately you don't, you're not gonna know. You're gonna find level ground and you're gonna get it however your area is gonna be positioned. You don't know how the, way, the rain or snow is gonna happen. So we'll just default that right away. Okay, so number one is yes, I would still want a soft rooftop tent like this that can overhang. Number two, do you really want to go through the hassle of setting up an annex? Me personally, I will not use that annex unless it's two or more people and I plan on doing a, an extended stay for more than three or four days. Would I set this up possibly if I do the Northwest Overland Rally next year? Yes, I probably would because that's a Thursday to Saturday. That gives me enough time to, to have that set up. Do I need it? No, unless the weather was really bad there and it was getting kind of rainy and such, I probably wouldn't even bother using it simply because of the fact that the weather is nice and I have the overhang. If there's any kind of dew or inclement weather, I still have the overhang to get in and out of the lat uh, up the ladder without getting wet. Uh, and not having the entrance of my tent getting exposed to the rain. Um, I really think a rooftop tent and an awning is the huge benefit. If you do something like the Wanaka 3 or Wanaka 4 and you get a Morpho, I can't see you going wrong there because while a lot of the times we want shelter from the elements while we're preparing our meals, whether we're doing other incidental chores, we want to be protected in that way. So I think something like a Morpho would be really good. Uh, Wanaka, uh, the uh, Gowana equipment also sells uh, a six and a half foot by six and a half foot awning. That's really good too, but that's going to be specific to your vehicle. My vehicle and my needs, it's just going to be too small of an, of an awning. So the Morpho is the way I went. Um, so if I'm with two or more people, I'm going to use this. Uh, now again, if, it's, if you're saying I don't want to deal with Gowana or I don't want to go through the hassle, I understand. This entire process, my first time doing it, it took me about 25 minutes, 30 minutes to actually unbox everything, set it all up. I was kind of watching my clock to see on my phone, kind of seeing how much time I was spending fussing with stuff. I spent a good half hour, 25 minutes, kind of learning and fitting this all together because there were no directions. That's why I'm doing this video for you guys, so at least you know a little bit. No directions in that. And again, I had struggles because my truck is taller. If you have a shorter truck, then you won't have this issue. Your floor pan will be able to spread out completely and then problem solved. Um, I still like the guidelines. I still like the stakes. I still like the, the quality of the material. The ladder is definitely something that, it, that should have been attended to from the manufacturer. Uh, but again, Guana Equipment uses the same ladder that a lot of other companies use. You'll see that easily enough. They do have upgrade ladders for some companies and are telescoping. They offer that differently, but 
for standard right now, Gowana only offers this ladder. So I definitely would go to look at a piece of carpet or something, a remnant and put it there, or even like an, uh, a floor mat that you do to enter a door and stuff like that, your house. Put something right there that was rubber coated or whatever, that'd be great. Is the annex big enough for my family and I? Yes, that annex is definitely big enough for the four of us to get together, do whatever we have to do. I like the annex because if I'm out with my wife and my daughter, or even my son and I, if we have this annex and we set the annex up, you could use a portable commode, a portable toilet. Okay, and you could put your toilet in there and have privacy in going to the bathroom or getting changed or even doing a, an expedient shower or a towel shower, like the shower pouches and stuff like that. You have privacy, you can, you can strip naked, you can get cleaned up, you don't have to worry about anything and you're secured and you have privacy. So that's where I think those are really beneficial. So if you're looking at something, if you're family of two or three, the Wanaka three is still a really good choice for you, as well as the Annex. Um, it'll be up to you with budget-wise to start shopping for tents. Still at the making of this video, we're in October, and Guana equipment is still one of the best options when it comes to quality of materials, the options that you have, as well as the price point. I haven't found one yet that beats this rooftop tent system by Guana equipment than anybody else. So do your homework, okay? Be due diligence about that. And if you have any questions, links are down below, as well as reach out to Guana Equipment. They have been very helpful with their customer service. Send them an email, they are quick to respond in a couple of days, it works out great. And if you are thinking about buying something, remember, I have discount codes, they are right here. at CK Knife Awning and CK Knife RTT. Those will give you huge discounts. It will help my channel out and help me grow both as a knife maker and as a business. So again, sorry for the length of the video, but I want to share everything with you as I possibly could. Until the next one, remember, like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Keep me from the bottom of the YouTube bucket, and we'll see you all on the next video. Bye.